I was trying to decide, since today's Friends Day, and you brought all your friends with you. You told me you had them, and so I guess I'll believe you now. I see some here. Uh, but uh, I was trying to decide if I should do something different or if we would continue on in the course that we're going. And I thought, friends are will with each other, and so we're just going to keep, keep going on the course that we've been going through within our church. And so we've been talking about uh, the gods or idols, as we call them, and uh, we see in the Old Testament a lot, and also within the New Testament, that uh, there are idols that people worship other than the one true God. And uh, the Bible tells us that there is one God and is revealed to us in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one, we call that Trinity. Uh, but all throughout the Old Testament, we see people making sacrifices to Baals and Asherah poles and all sorts of idols. And so that leads us to a question of, are the gods that we meet in the Bible something or are they nothing? And as our idol has continued to tell us, he says, yes, right? In comparison to God, right, there are no other gods, right? There is only one God. One God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega. There is only one God, creator of all things that we worship, and that's who we declare, and that's who we've been worshiping all this time. That's who we've been praying to, is this one God revealed to us through the scriptures, and most clearly in the person of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. And so that's who we worship, right? But we also see that there is this tension in that we as human beings have this knack for falling into idolatry. And so when it comes to, uh, in comparison to uh, human beings, right, idols in comparison to God are nothing, but in comparison to human beings, idols are actually something that are very real and something that is very dangerous, right? And so we talked a little bit about this last week, but idols are things that entice us, right? They uh, want us, uh, they draw us to to be something maybe uh, more than what we are, which is a lot of things that can be like that, right? One of the the things that I used was like Patrick Mahomes, right? One of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And you see him and you're like, wow, like if you're a football person or just like a 32-year-old man, (laughs) Right? You're like, I want to be like Patrick Mahomes. Right? He can throw the ball, not looking. Whoo, touchdown. Incredible, right? It's amazing, right? But if we are, are not careful, right, we can put people, whoever it might be or whatever it might be, put it up on a pedestal and decide that's what I long for. That's what I'm going to strive to be, that people would know who I am, that I am the greatest, right? And it entices us. Right? And that could be power, that could be uh, fame, that could be money, right? Any of these things that entice us so that we are on the pop top and people notice us, right? This is a form of idolatry because what? There is only one God, and that's not you. It's not Patrick Mahomes, right? It's not money, right? There is only one God, creator of all things. Uh, one of the things that uh, is a true by idolatry is that it lifts up ourselves. Deuteronomy 8, 17, it says, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. Right? Want to talk about me? Want to talk about I? Right? It's me, 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 me. Look at what I have done. Look at what I have achieved by my strength, by my smarts, by my skills, by my looks. Right? Me, 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 me. Look what I have accomplished. And we put ourselves at the top, right? And no, no, no. This, this space of honor, this space of worship belongs to only one. One God. And three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This, this Lord of Lords is the only one worthy of our worship. And so uh, idols are a dangerous thing. They also are things that we trust, right? I believe that's the next slide. Things that we trust, right? In a world that um, has a lot of fear in it, right? There are things that we can cling on to believing that it's going to give us security, 
right? And last week, I really tried to, really tried to offend everybody in here, right? But some of the examples that we use for guns, like we like our guns, right? I like my guns, right? And we can, we can feel the security that, man, if I can just protect myself, right, then everything's going to be good, right? Or if I can have financial security, if I can just save up enough, then when the bad times come and people are bringing out their guns, right, then I'll, I'll, I'll still be secure, right, because I've set myself up financially for this. Right? And we have all these different things right, that we fear. And so in order to take control of it, right, we put our trust in our money, in our family, in the institutions. Right? And not that these things are bad in themselves, but we can begin to sacrifice and place them at the top. And this spot is only for the one God who is worthy of all of our worship. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and nothing is to take his place. It's also things that we rely on. Things that we rely on, right? Some of you are like, man, Luke, I'm not all about the money, 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 right? I hardly, hardly have any, right? I just, I'm just getting by, and I don't have the nicest house in the neighborhood, but you know, mine, mine is good, right? And so it's not like I'm, I'm placing that at the very top and I love my family and it's surely that's not that bad, right? And the thing is, none of those things are bad, but it's when we place them at the very spot of our worship that is it the things that we would say, when it comes down to it, these things are mine and I'm not willing to give them back to the Lord. That's idolatry. Because... Our worship belongs to him and him alone, to the one true God. And so idolatry is so dangerous because idolatry dethrones God and enthrones creation. Idolatry dethrones God and enthrones creation. So we take God down from this place and we can put anything else above him. Anything else that we're putting above him, we're putting on the throne of our life. And it's very important to God that we don't do this, right? Because in the beginning, uh, God created us in his image, and he told us that we are made in his image, that we are to be rulers of this world, but we are to do it in the same way that he does things, right? But at the fall, we're like, God, we're going to do it our way and the way we want to do it. And so as time went on, God made this very important that he made the Ten Commandments. And the very first two talk about there will be no other gods before me, right? He says in Exodus 20, 3 and 4, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, right? And he's not jealous because these things are greater than him. He's jealous because he loves you. And he does not want you to go off and hurt yourself going after these things. Why would it be that God says, you shall not have no other God before me? Why would God say, you shall not make any idols before me? Right. Because idols deprive, first and foremost, God of his proper glory. Idols deprive God of his proper glory. Only God gets this space of worship. Only God is worthy of all of our worship. Right? Psalm 96, 7 through 9 says this. Ascribe to the Lord. Give credit to the Lord, all you families of the nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, who? All the earth. All of the earth is to worship this God because God is the only person worthy of our worship. 
and all of creation was created to bring glory back to God. And you were image bearers of God. You were made in his image, made to give God glory, right? And it tells us in Isaiah 42, 8, that the Lord is very particular about this. He says, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. And so it, it might be easy for us to just think, okay, yeah, we're supposed to honor God and I know that I'm supposed to do that, right? But it's another when you hear God saying this to us. And he's saying, I am not going to yield myself of my glory. That I desire your worship. I desire for all things to glorify me because that is how you were created, to bring glory back to him. Right? And so I think, you know, sometimes we have this space and we say this is God's space and we're not supposed to make an image of God so you can just kind of imagine this is God's space right this is where the glory is due him and I think we know that uh, nothing nothing else belongs here but you know admittedly I'm going to tell you all this stuff that I found was basically in my office besides these but this is a very good thing right oat milk cream pies right we all have a guilty pleasure, right? Some are uh, way less innocent than oatmeal cream pies. But sometimes we can say, you know what? I, I kind of want what I want. And I know it's not the best for me. For those of you who don't know, I have type 1 diabetes, right? So these are really not good for me, right? But, you know, I think God understands that I need some me space. And God knows the, the things that I like. And so I think... God, you know, I still worship God, but I also think he, he allows me, you know, the things that I want also. Well, and then, you know, I also really enjoy kind of making a name for myself. I got a trophy this one time. I won a race a long time ago, right? And, hey, I just want you all to know that, that I was number one. And, you know, God deserves all the glory, right? Thanks to him, but, you know... I'm kind of a big deal, right? And so I just, you know, and sometimes we can even put, you know, different uh, people in there as well. This is uh, John, John Wesley. He's one of the founders of uh, kind of our, the church. That, well, he's not the founder, but we get our theology from this guy, and he's really a big deal to us. And uh, if we're not careful, sometimes we can place our faith and trust in people who do wonderful things, right? Right? He was a wonderful man. He wasn't God, right? But sometimes I decide that, well, if, if this person said it, it's true, and I'm not going to back off of that instead of going to the source of truth, right? And if we are not careful, we can start to put these people above the truth. And this could look like theologians. This could look like a political party, this could look like it, but anything that we decide, that's who I'm going to listen to, and I'm not willing to change my mind about, even if scripture tells me otherwise, right, that can become an idol. Oh, man, and I love my money, right? All of it, I, I love all my money, right? I, I wish this was a little more full, but God knows I need it, Right? And, and, and God does take care of me, but sometimes I know that, you know, he, he doesn't always seem to pull through. And so it's good to have a little extra. And sometimes God asks some, some more of me. He tells me that I want to be in control of your finances and I, I want you to be a generous person. I'm like, yeah, God, but, you know, what about me, right? And so I think God understands that, though. And so, you know, this is, this is, this is mine as well, right? Oh, and, you know... My education is really, really good, and I just want you all to know that I'm a very smart person, right? And uh, we, can, we can let other people know that I have the credentials, 
right? And that, that, that's really important, and so we can make a name for myself. And, and, and not, God is still God, right? We're, I'm not saying that he's not, right? But also, I just want you to know that I, I'm a pretty big deal. And then, of course, I'm married to just like the most beautiful woman ever, right? And I have a beautiful daughter, and these things are definitely, of all the things, these are mine, right? You, God can't have these people. These people are mine, and I'm going to take care of these people. And so, God, God, you can, you can still, here, I'll, I'll make some space for you, right? He, God, you can have this space, but also, Lord, I think I can, you know, it fits, it works, right? And this is not what God calls us to, folks. He does not call us to be the God alongside my family, alongside my finances, the God alongside making my name great, the God alongside my guilty pleasures. He doesn't want to be the God alongside anything. God says that this space, ascribe to the Lord the worship that is due his name, that he alone is God that he alone is worthy of our worship, and that you shall have no other gods before me, no other gods alongside me, that he alone is worthy to be praised. And when we get this right, it's not that we just junk these things, but these things fall into line. And that when I get this right, man, I'm a better father, I'm a better husband, that my finances are going to work out, right, if I, if, I, if I follow the will of God, that I don't have to make myself name great because I'm a, I'm a child of God. What else do I need? Right, when we understand that God is worthy of our worship, right, everything else falls into place. Idols distort the image of God and human beings, right? So there's a danger of not giving God the glory that is due him. But then if we are not giving the, the, the glory that is due God, which is what cre- human beings were created to do, when we're not doing that, that means that we are being less than human, right? For although they knew God, it tells us in Romans, They neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like moral human beings and birds and reptiles and animals, right? So idolatry does harm to the human being. It says that we become fools when we do this. Idolatry is self-harm. It tells us in the book of Psalms that you made the rulers over the works of your hands, right? God has made us rulers of the works of his hands. Look outside at creation. God says that we are rulers over those things, that we are stewards of those things, that we get to be in charge of the works of whose hands? Of God's hands, right? What an honor that God has bestowed upon us that responsibility. But what do we do? It tells us in Psalm 115, but their idols are silver and gold made by human hands. So we've exchanged what God has given us, this responsibility over the works of his hands. And instead of worshiping God in the way that we do that, instead of taking care of the stuff, we begin to worship the stuff. And God has called us to put him over all things. And when we do not do what God has called us to do, we are becoming less than human, right? It says they have mouths, but they cannot speak. The idols have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. And it goes on and on. And it says those who make them will be like them, right? And I don't know how many of you have seen this within your own life, that you see somebody that you love, 
that gets addicted to something or begins to put their work above everything else or whatever it might be, and they, they put that thing above all else and they begin to worship it. You can see this with alcohol or with drugs, right? And they, man, now it's their, their time is dedicated to getting that money so they can buy the drugs. And then they're telling lies to their family so they can you know, stay away from that and you know, try to juggle both lives. And what we see over time period is that they become less and less like themselves, right? They become less and less human. Why? Because we are not worship, are not made to worship the creation. We are made to worship the creator. And when we do this, we are less than human. We are hurting ourselves by putting the creation over the creator. Idolatry is self-harm. And here's the other thing. Idols are a big disappointment. Right? At the end, you all know this. You've all seen this within your own life. Right? That you put something up on the pedestal, then you achieve it, you have it, whatever it might be, three seconds later, you have buyer's remorse. Right? You feel guilty for what you've done. Right? Idols are a big disappointment. They don't lead to where we think they will lead. Jeremiah 2, 27 through 28 says this. They have turned their back to me and not their faces. Yet they are in trouble. They say, come and save us. Where then are the gods that you made for yourselves? Let them come if they can save you when you are in trouble. God's kind of had it with them at this point. They've turned to their idols over and over again, and now they're in a place of exile, right? Because our worship has consequences, right? If you continue to worship things other than God, it's going to lead you some, down some dark pathways. It's going to lead you into some real trouble. It's going to hurt the relationships around you. Why? Because we weren't created to worship the things. We were wor- created to worship the creator, Right? And so if we get that messed up, everything else, instead of following through as God ordered, is all out of whack. And so we mess that stuff up, and it gives it a dark road. And then I don't know how many of you have ever done this. I know I'm guilty of it, right? But the Israelites have been to this point where they're at the bottom, and they're like, God, help us, right? And God kind of gives this remark back. He's like, hey, you know, talk to your idol, right? It will get you out of this mess, right? You should go talk to them. They're, they're, you know, they're able to save you. Talk to him. Go on. And what we realize is what, you know, all my efforts to worshiping this thing has led me down to this terrible path. And now I'm in this place where I realize, oh God, I need you. Now, God was a little fed up with him at this time, right? But he, he does come back around, and he's, he's gracious, and he brings him out, uh, out of that place, right? But it's good for us to hear that, that God rebukes those who go down this path. Hey, turn to your idols, right? They've led you to such a good place so far, right? God tells them to move on. Ecclesiastes is a wonderful uh, book if you want to be depressed, right? You should read Ecclesiastes. But here in this little section, the, the, the author is talking about how they achieved all these things. It says, I increased my achievements. I built a house. I had a vineyard. I had a garden and parks. I constructed reservoirs. I acquired male and female servants. I owned many herds of cattle and stock. I amassed silver and gold. I gathered male and female singers, right? Many concubines, the delight of men, right? Okay, this guy's a little strange, all right? So he's got all this stuff. And also it says that he still has his wisdom. All that my eyes desired, I I, I, I did not deny them, right? Can you imagine living that type of life that whatever you wanted, you got, 
And he says, and I did not refuse myself in any pleasure. If he wanted it, he got it. For I took pleasure in all my struggles. Yet, when I considered all that I had accomplished and what I had labored to achieve, I found everything to be futile and the pursuit of the wind. All the pleasures this person ever wanted, he attained them. All these things that he was striving after, he got them. And yet he said it was futile. Idols disappoint. Because only God can fill that hole. Because we are created to worship him. Jeremiah 2.13. For my people have committed a double evil. They have abandoned me, the spring of living water, and dug cisterns for themselves. Cracked cisterns that cannot hold water. We think about this verse, and I can't afford on the budget that we have to have a spring up here, so this is our spring, right? And you think about a spring, a spring isn't stagnant, right? It, it, it's bubbling forth with fresh water, right? It's alive of fresh water. Day after day, the spring is bursting forth of fresh water. And it says that we, God, God wants us to take this in. We were created to just be a part of God filling us over and over again. This is the spring, you see, it just keeps going and going, right? Living, living water. This isn't stagnant. This is just God giving us his blessings as we are his image bearers and we glorify him and we put him first and we love others as we were called to love them, that we even love our enemies as Jesus called us to do, as we worship God and the way and the truth and the life. As we do this, right, we are filled with living water. And Jesus says, they have abandoned the spring of living water. And what did they do instead? They dug for themselves cisterns, right? And what's a cistern supposed to do? It's just supposed to hold the water. It's, it's stagnant. It just holds it. It's not living. It's not bursting forth day after day. It's holding what they can hold on to, right? And you think about what our idols often are doing is trying to have control, right? And so you never know when the spring water might run out, so it's probably good that we store some up in our cisterns, right? And if I can just take control, if I can just have my family, if I can just have enough financial security later on, if I can just, whatever it might be, right? But whenever we put the creation over the creator, what God has for us, right? It, it just runs out. When we give our things to these idols, there's nothing that we can do. It doesn't hold. And we abandon this living water and we go to our wells that are just dried up and it doesn't give us life. And how many of you have gone trying to find life in some kind of meaning in your life, whether it was in your family, whether it was in your job, whatever it was, if it was the pleasures of this life, and you've gone there and you've attained it, and then what you realize is, is it just left you dry. Because we were not created to worship the creation. We were created to be in fellowship and to worship the creator who is living water. Day after day, he wants to be in relationship with you. Day after day, he wants you to be in loving relationship with him, be obedient to his word, be in prayer with him, that you would know Jesus, that you would love others like Jesus. He is the spring of life. And it says that we abandon that for an empty cistern. 
We are not meant to worship the creation. We are meant to worship the creator. John chapter 7, Jesus says this, Anyone who believes in me may come and drink, for the scriptures declare, rivers of living water flow from his heart. Friends, do you want this living water? Do you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead? Then you have to put away your idols and say, God, you alone are worthy of my worship. And Lord, when I screw it up and I, and I try to put things there, God, will you just remind me that you alone are worthy of that? And so God, I, I give them back to you. This isn't just a one and done deal. This is a day after day, right? Because as you get older, you struggle with different things than you did when you were a kid, right? I'm struggling with things different in my 30s than I did in my 20s, right? And it, what is it? It's just me, again, having my 30-year-old idols and having to say, okay, God, I'm going to have to give these back to you, right? And it's this constant relationship because I don't want to be trying to live my life. But I want to be filled with God and his presence in my life. And so, God, I want to put you first because you are worthy of my worship because that's what I'm created for. You are created to worship God. Are you living into that calling? Or are you trying to, to have it all? Your idols? Are you putting these things before God? Today is a, a wonderful day that we can come before the Lord and say, God, I want to give you these things. I want to be in the living water. I don't want to abandon your, your living water, God. Would you just fill me up? And Lord, if there's anything in my life that I'm putting above you, would you just take it from me? Everybody just please stand, and we're going to have a time of prayer. And if you feel like, if you could just name something, you know, I had all these silly things up here, but there might be something up here, man, that you, you could just name and you would say, I know that this space that's for God, I've been filling it up with different things. And you just want to say, God, I want to give it back to you. If you'd like to do that today, we, we have these altars and we, it's a space that we just pray before the Lord. And if you'd like to come down and just pray, we would love to pray with you. But we're going to have a time where we just come before the Lord honestly and say, God, would you, would you just work within me? Because I want to be filled with living water. Let's just have a time now where these altars are open. If you feel like you need to pray, you can come and pray. Sherry, would you, can you only play the piano? I'm sorry. Could you play the piano? These altars are open. And what would they think if I went down to the altar? They'd think that person loves the Lord and wants to worship him only. That's a good thing. Is there anybody that would want to say, God, I just want to give it all to you. Come down. Pray before the Lord.
do love you. God, we thank you, Lord, that you have created us to love and worship you. And God, uh, all glory is due you. And so, Lord, we give you praise today. And Lord, uh, if there is anything in our lives, God, that is coming before you, Lord, we just want to cast those things down. And God, give them back to you, Lord. God, that there wouldn't be anything between us and your worship, Lord. And God, may our whole lives reflect uh, the glory that's uh, due you, Lord. And uh, God, we just pray that you would uh, help open up our eyes to these things. Lord, we pray that you'd be with us now as we, as we eat and have fun together. Lord, that uh, we would just sense your presence among us, Lord, as we uh, have fun and have good conversation and play. Lord, that we would just see evidence of your love amongst us as well. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. I want to, uh, before you go, so we're going to go over and we're going to eat some chili. Woohoo! And uh, then after that, uh, we're going to have games over here in the field. And so get your food, eat, have fun, and then I'll, I'll play some games. We're going to play some